Today we will see few things that you really need to know about fish biology before starting aquaponics. So if you want to grow some fish at home, if you want to have your own aquaponic system producing some sustainable, healthy and tasty food in your own backyard thanks to aquaponics, you will have to keep some fish right in the fish tank. You need to build a little bit of knowledge before doing this about the fish. You know, fish are living creatures that are in water and the water environment is very different to uh, anything that you can grow on earth, right? Uh, you can't compare, for example, growing chicken to growing fish. Chicken, you just need to give them a bit of food, a safe place to sleep. It can be a bit more complex, obviously, but it's, it's very basic. While for fish, they are into the water, they need to breathe in the water, and there are a lot of interactions between fish and the water that you need to be conscious of. Uh, when you keep fish, you need to give them some good conditions, otherwise they will stress, they will fall sick and they will eventually die. So this video today is really for you if you don't have this basic knowledge at the beginning, if you have never kept fish with success, that's a video you really need to watch and uh, hopefully it will avoid you to kill any fish and it will allow you to grow some fish uh, in a good way and to give them a good environment for their beautiful growth. So uh, what we're going to do in this video, we're going to see different steps and uh, I really recommend you to stay until the end because I'm going to give you some points one after the other. You really need to understand all those points to understand how the fish uh, is growing, how the fish is living into the water and to be able to take care of them in the best way possible. So the first thing that I want to highlight is that the fish are living in the water and therefore they are fragile. If you compare a fish to an animal or even a human, you know humans we are developed and we are equipped to live on gravity. You know we have legs, we have bones and a structure that allows us to hold together and to walk on earth and to fight against gravity. The fish, they live in an environment that is completely different, right? In the water there is no gravity or very low gravity. So their body is not equipped to fight against gravity and therefore if you pick a fish from uh, the fish tank uh, first thing the fish will not be able to breathe if you put it on, uh, on the atmosphere some fish are able to but I'm not gonna go there right now what I want to highlight is that gravity is gonna uh, put some pressure on him but the fish is not developed as us it doesn't have the bones same as us it has some little bones very thin but the structure of the fish is very weak. If you let a fish drop, sometimes inside the fish you got a bladder. A bladder is uh, basically, uh, it's like a balloon if you like, that is inside the fish, allows him to uh, regulate the floatability inside the water. If you let a fish drop, sometimes it just breaks the bladder. The bladder bursts and therefore uh, the fish is dead, right? You put it back in the water, it's gonna die. Also the liver, all the internal organs of the fish are very exposed when they are to gravity. So be very careful when you manipulate a fish, don't manipulate it on top of concrete, do it on top of the grass or do it low, at a low, uh, low height, so that if it just drops it's just going to slide. Uh, but really keep this in mind, they are not like us, they are very fragile animals. Also fish are living into the water so they ha there are a lot of exchanges with the water. The first one obviously is the water temperature. Uh, the water is directly in contact with the fish right it's like when you go into a shower you can feel if you have a cold shower you really feel the cold straight away because the thermic exchange in the water are very high. You know the air insulates but the water conducts the temperature. So the fish are living in the water and they need to live in a temperature that is adapted to their uh, requirements. That's one thing that is very basic, but you need to keep it in mind. Um, a second thing, obviously, you got a lot of parameters in the water. One of them is the oxygen. You need to make sure you get enough oxygen for your fish. I'm not going to develop too much those points in this, uh, in this video. I want to go through a, a number of uh, parameters and of points that, can, uh, that are very typical to the fish. 
when you want to grow a fish. So then if you want to go a bit further, have a look at my other videos on the channel where I go a bit further into on the oxygen or the water parameters. Talking about water parameters, you need to make sure that your ammonia, nitrate, nitrate levels are okay for the fish you want to grow. You need to make sure the pH is also okay. So you see there are a few things, it's not just putting the fish in the water. There are a few parameters that are very important for the health of the fish and you need to be able to check them and to make sure that your fish is going to be able to survive in those parameters. Don't be scared if you are just beginning and if you are just interested by aquaponics, you don't have this knowledge. It's a knowledge that you can build, that we will work on together. Uh, but just make sure, just be aware that that's parameters that you need to check. You can't just put a fish in the water and hoping for the best. Another point that is important is the osmosis. So, so osmosis is a physical phenomenon and it's basically some, a, a force that pushes water from the, from the environment the less concentrated to the environment the more concentrated. So for example, um, if you have uh, two glasses of water connected with a pipe, if you put some salt in one of the glass, the water level is going to increase where you put the salt. Simply because the water is going there to try to dilute the concentration of salt, right? So the fish are living in fresh water. Inside the fish there is a concentration of minerals that is higher than in the water. Uh, it's the same as humans, you know, when you cry you can feel, a, you can test that it's salty. Uh, the tears are salty, you know, and it's simply because uh, inside our body we got a lot of salt, a higher concentration of salt and potassium. Uh, than in a classic water. Same thing for the fish. Uh, all their body cycles are based on Krebs cycle. Uh, it's a biological reaction basically that's a machine of, uh, of the metabolism. So it means that in the fish you got more minerals than in the water. Therefore the water is always trying to go inside the fish to dilute this concentration. That's what we call the osmosis. So the fish has to regulate uh, this uh, osmosis and it has to fight against uh, the osmos. That's what we call the osmos reg osmo regulation. Uh, that's, uh, that's taking a lot of energy from the fish. And there are a few things that we can do in aquaponics to decrease uh, this strength, to help the fish to fight against the osmosis and to allow the fish to uh, minimize the quantity of energy that is spending in the osmosis process. Now, if we have a look at uh, the fish by itself, if you look at the fish, it's got some fins. The fins are helping him to move into the water. It's also a very good indicator of fish with fins that are broken, that are damaged, means that he's been stressed either by other animals, a heather has been kept in high density, and uh, therefore it touched on the, on the side of the tank, or it can be a lot of fins, but have a look at the fins. You can see if you can see parasites on the fins as well, so it's really going to give you a lot of information about the fish. Same for the eye, the eye of the fish uh, grows with the fish, so a fish that is small size with a big eye means that a fish that is quite old and didn't have the opportunity to grow, so it's not a fish that is really uh, healthy. Um, now, if we look at uh, the, the fish, the body of the fish, we got different fins to check. Uh, first you got the skin. The skin is uh, one barrier, one boundary against disease, right? Disease are sometimes trying to go in the fish. Fortunately, there is skin. There are three main uh, uh, barriers for those, back, for those uh, um, disease that are trying to attack the fish. The skin, so the skin needs to be uh, uh, in good uh, conditions, right? You don't want to have any, uh, scar any uh, scarf, uh, any opening, any wound any injury in the fish, obviously. Then you got scales. So the scales, depending on the species of fish, some species such as the trout have, the, have got scales, but they are, the scales are very thin, very small. And if you touch the fish with your dry hands, the scale can sometimes stay on the, you know, stick on, um, on, on your hands when you, when you handle the fish. So when you touch a fish, you always need to have the, uh, the, the, the hands wet first before touching any fish. So the scales are very important for the fish. And then on top of this, you got the mucus. Mucus is, is, a, is a gluey uh, liquid that is uh, all around the fish and helps the fish to slide in the water. But it's also helping the fish to uh, keep the disease away. It's kind of sealing the fish, if you like. So it's very important when you touch your fish, don't use any special uh, tissue or fabric because you can wipe the mucus away. 
and then you put the fish back in the tank and the fish has to produce more mucus but during this time it's very exposed to disease. So all those things are things that you need to keep in mind. A fish is adapted to water and if it's growing it has a specific purpose, there is a, a specific uh, uh, reason for that. So keep this in mind, respect it when you handle your fish, you have to keep those things in mind. Also, the fish are able to breathe into the water. We say that they consume oxygen into the water. This oxygen, uh, they use it, they consume it thanks to the gills. So the gills, they are little veins, you know, they have little veins that are here and um, uh, they are vessels of blood basically and they, they are so thin that they allow the oxygen to go through, but not the water. So it's very important to keep this in mind. Never put your hand inside the gills of the fish, right? Never, you see sometimes the fishermen that are doing this. If you, are, if you have killed the fish, if the fish is dead, you can do that. But if you don't want to keep the fish alive, never put your hands there because the vessels are so small that just with your hands through, you're going to open the vessels, you're going to break them basically. Then when you put the fish back in the water, it's going to lose all its blood in the water, it's going to die. So very important, never put your hands in the gills of the fish. Another thing that is important to understand is that in the fish, uh, you know, we got, like humans, we got different sensors, senses, right? We, we, we can taste, we can touch, we can hear, we can smell. Well, the fish are as well, they have their senses and one of their senses is to basically feel the vibrations that are around them. But it's, it's a very, very well developed sense for the fish. That's how when you walk on the bank of a river, sometimes you see the fish and they kind of hear you when you are walking and they, they swim away. It's because they feel the vibration. How do they feel the vibration? They got some, some uh, specific organs all along their body and they got one line, especially if you look at the side of the fish, generally you can see a lateral line. Uh, and there, all along the line, they got some sensors and they can really feel the vibration. So when you walk around your fish tank, try to be soft. Don't go and bang, 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 because you're gonna stress the fish because they are very sensitive to the vibrations that are in the water. Another thing that is important uh, to take in consideration, it seems very basic, it's very, very fun actually to say, but I have seen sometimes some people uh, making some mistakes there. So it's basically, have a look at the size of the mouth of the fish. You know, you got different fish. Some fish are big with uh, a very small mouth. Some fish are small with a very big mouth. Just depend on the spaces. Predators fish, generally speaking, they have a big mouth. And fish that are omnivorous, uh, they have a smaller mouth. So have a look at the mouth of the fish. And when you want to feed your fish, make sure that the fish food you are giving to your fish is able to go through the mouth, right? You are not going to feed a fish with a big pellet food, like 20 millimeters, if the fish is this big and the mouth is like this, right? If the, if the food can't physically go through, it's not going to work. So just keep this in mind. It's very basic, but um, important to not make this mistake, making sure the food you're going to give to your fish is adapted to the size of the mouth. And there are a lot of other points that I could add, but just one last one that I think is important is the behavior of the fish. Because different fish, as I said, predator use, some that are omnivorous, some that are trigger use, so they like to live in school. So all those things are very important to take in consideration when you select a, a fish species for your aquaponic system. Depending on the size of the tank, sometimes you will need to make sure you have spaces that I can live in, in, a, in a school and you are not going to have just a few fish because sometimes uh, they're going to attack each other depending on the species. That, that happened with trout, for example. If you put just a few trout in the tank, uh, they're going to, one of them is going to become territorial. Uh, but if you put a lot of them, they are not going to develop this behavior. So uh, all those things are things you need to, to, to have in mind. When you start aquaponics, I really recommend to start with fish that are uh, able to live together uh, Communitary use, you know, uh, fish that are uh, social, let's say, and uh, they're going to allow each other uh, to grow and to, uh, to, to use their whole potential. Uh, so, all those things are points that are very important. Uh, again, it's just a few that are very basic that I give you today. There are way more to know about fish, uh, but along the videos that I, that I uh, that I give you on, uh, on YouTube, the free videos, you can learn a lot already uh, about fish. 
uh, if you want to know more. Um, also, if you are starting aquaponics, I recommend you to get uh, the free uh, aquaponics training uh, from the description of the video just below. Uh, it's a step-by-step -step training where I give you some uh, crucial information uh, to build your knowledge and to know the basics to be able to build an aquaponics system but also uh, to maintain it in a sustainable way and to grow sustainable, healthy and tasty food in your own backyard. So if you thought that you, this video was in interesting and you learned something, please give it a like, share it with your friends. Uh, don't uh, forget if you are a completely new to the channel to subscribe because I release one video every week. So you're going to learn more and more information uh, more and more. You can build your knowledge basically about aquaponics. So subscribe to the channel. And I see you in the next video. Bye bye. Don't forget to get your free gift from this screen. You can also leave me a comment below the video, subscribe to the channel and see my last video. I really hope to see you soon. And I wish you a fantastic success with aquaponics. Have a good crop.